I hate robots, but I think I'm changing my mind. I'm Brian Cooley from CNET in search of the next big thing. Humanoid style robots have been on the scene for quite a while, at least a decade now, give or take. And so far they've had a market share and an importance that is kind of down there with the Segway and the home 3D printer, appealing mostly to geeks who are fascinated by the possible and not so concerned about the practical. As a result, we ended up with these things that are extremely humanoid, trying almost too hard to be like mechanical people. Honda's Osimo, dancing like your father. Or Toyota's robot, playing a violin. Both amazed us, but maybe didn't speak to a role in your home. But now something's changing, as we're seeing robot developers get more focused on relatability and usability, not just technical ability. LG just introduced a full line of robots that kind of have a face and an ability to communicate, but notice no arms or excessively humanoid features. And their smarts are powered by Amazon Alexa on the back end. A bigger model is meant to be an airport employee who not only listens to you and helps you, but also guides you where you may need to go. It's also got a partner that is a janitor model. The impact of that trend on employment is fascinating, but beyond the scope of our show. Startup Smart Beings is developing a robot they have unfortunately named Woohoo that you might think is just an Amazon Echo with a screen. But it has a rotating head so its camera can look where its ears and microphones tell it the action is to better understand the scene and again be somewhat relatable. It's envisioned as handling information communication to you, updates, weather, things like that, as well as integrating with your smart home, for example, as part of its function. And note that it has facial and voice recognition plan, an important part of allowing it to identify you as an individual, not just as a human. And Mayfield Robotics sort of stole the show at CES with a robot called Curie that doesn't do much but be very relatable. Without arms, legs, a screen, or even a voice, it communicates with head and eye gestures as well as a series of blips and beeps. <laughs> Sounds crazy, I know, but a lot of skeptics, including me, were kind of impressed by how much they've done to make those simple cues and gestures very understandable. It too promises advanced facial recognition so it can better anticipate the needs of who it's looking at by knowing who it's looking at. I think you can see now that the future of robots is shaping up to not necessarily be about their abilities. That is likely going to be commodity, but instead about their nuance and relatability as something that you have in your life but don't necessarily have to cater your life to. And this will be based on three particular attributes that I'm seeing. One, of course, is integration. Robots that are fully engaged in my preferences, history, calendar, contacts, all of the things that make everything smart in my life. Another is recognition. As we've talked about, the ability for a robot to understand who I am based on my face and my voice. It allows it to really dial in and serve me, which leads to the big one anticipation. We already have a lot of the functions that we're seeing in these robots in our phones and tablets, but those are more tools than assistance because they have not taken the bar of anticipation and raised it. That is the sweet spot for the coming robot. Know what's next at cnet.com slash next big thing. I'm Brian Cooley.